Hi, Gary Hoover here. Today I want to talk about the service economy. You see a lot in the press about the decline of American manufacturing. Some people think that should be of great concern to all of us. And you probably hear a little less about the service economy, or when you do, it's in this um, negative sense of like, oh, well, so we're going to be working at McDonald's. Everybody will be flipping burgers and all that. And I think that's not really an accurate way to understand either the present or the future. So let me start out with some data out of my book, The Art of Enterprise, that I wrote 10 years ago. I just grabbed it out of there. This is the share of U.S. employment, how many workers worked in each part of the American economy. And in this uh, list, it's categorized into three groups, people that worked in agriculture, people that worked in industry, mainly manufacturing, and people that worked in the services, whether it's government services, educational services, financial services, legal services, health care services, on and on and on, includes retailing and wholesaling. In agriculture, 39% of all Americans worked in agriculture a little over 100 years ago. 121. Um, and 27% worked in industry, heavy industry, things like that. Interesting is services were already bigger than industry at 34% even 100 years ago. Fast forward to today. Now I know you say, well, 21 years ago isn't today, but in these kind of trends, it's not that long ago. We're down to 3% of the American people work in agriculture. So a dramatic decline, one, uh, one thirteenth as many people as a share of the total number of workers in America. And yet we're better fed than ever. Our nutrition, uh, our total proteins and calories we take in is high. Some would say too high. But it's not like we're all starving to death because people don't work in agriculture anymore. Industry actually hadn't changed very much. Gone down a little bit. And I suspect, I need to do my research on this, that it may have gone up in between those two and is, is now on the way down. But clearly, longer term, it's in decline. And in services, what I'm talking about today, as of even 21 years ago, 71% of all American workers worked in the service economy. Globally, if you look at GNP, GDP, things like that, gross national product, gross domestic product, 69% of the world economy, even including the poorest nations, today is in services. And so this is a big trend. It's a trend that's uh, um, sweeping through all parts of our lives and all around the globe. And nothing is going to turn back this trend. And even, and so what this means is that we, we spend less on food than we used to. We used to spend something like 40% of our income on food. And, and now it's like down under 10%. But even within that, when we buy food, where do we buy it? So here's another, uh, some numbers I put together. Now this is more recent and more short term. From 1967 to 2007, this is in the U.S., where do we buy our food, beverages, and meals? And, uh, and, and we bought in 1967 68.5% of it in what we call food and beverage stores. So that means grocery stores, liquor stores, um, places that focus on selling food and beverage. At the other end of the scale in eating and drinking places, restaurants and bars, and most of this is restaurants and grocery stores, and we're talking about this, but so I'll call it the services side because they're serving us the food rather than us just buying the product. That was 28.3% of the total dollars that we spent on a food and beverage, where we buy it. Recently, the government came out with their uh, census of retailing. It's done every five years. The 2007 data just came out recently. And my best estimate based on that data is that the grocery stores and their kin are down to 37%, and eating and drinking places are up to 45.3%. Now, you notice these don't total 100% because there are other places, places like Costco, gas stations, convenience stores, drug stores, uh, Amazon. But nevertheless, this is the bulk of it. Uh, what do we got? About 97% covered here and uh, maybe 82. So actually lost, lost some. But the big story here is a decline of the grocery stores in terms of their share of the market and the rise of restaurants. And, and what's going on here is that 
we know how to feed ourselves. That's why agriculture went down. We've got that figured out. And a lot of that gain, again, is through automation and through machinery, through technological progress, through higher productivity. Well, to some degree, that's a, what's going on in manufacturing as well, in, in terms of uh, products. Um, the big U.S. steel plant in Gary, Indiana, still makes a huge amount of steel, like it did in the 1950s, but it employs a fraction of the number of people it used to because they figured out how to use more advanced machinery and everything. So we're in a, a long-term decline of heavy industry worldwide. We still need stuff, and we're still going to get the stuff. We still need food. We're still going to get the food. But it takes a smaller share of all of our efforts. And so what instead is we become, um, we go into services. Now, when you hear this thing about, oh, services, it's a bunch of uh, hamburger flippers, and oh, those jobs pay low and everything, well, Barack Obama is a service worker. Um, George W. Bush is a service worker. Lady Gaga is a service worker. Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, uh, A-Rod, uh, um, every lawyer, every doctor, every nurse, every truck driver. Those are jobs where there's shortages last I looked, and those are high-paying jobs that require different levels of education. Uh, 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 services are all around us, and services are great. And, and I think we need to get our heads around this idea we are becoming a service economy and we want to become a service economy rather than dragging our feet and fighting it and saying, oh, well, we don't want to do that or it's bad. No, it's going to happen no matter what. So you might as well get out in front of it and embrace it and, and embrace, it, embrace it more aggressively. Here's a great book called The Experience Economy by Pine and Gilmore. This is kind of the basic textbook about how experiences are becoming more important than just products, and that relates to the rise of the service economy. And another thing I'd urge us to do is, if you look at our society academically, you look at what people study in universities and everything, is we need to really study innovation in the service industries. I bought a book called the Oxford Handbook of Innovation, and I bought it because on Amazon I could tell it had chapters called Innovation in the Service Industries and Innovation in Low Tech, and I'm very interested in that, how we innovate in the service industries, because it's the bulk of the global economy. And, and I got the book, I know it's great, it's going to have all, because I've been looking and looking, couldn't find anything that really talked about innovation in the service industries. And when I got into it, those chapters, what they mainly talked about was the use of computers in the service industries. They didn't ever really talk about innovation in the service industries. And it's just crazy because the innovations we've made in services over the last 50 and 100 years probably have more to tell us about how to make innovations going forward than most of the innovations we've made in manufacturing. Now, again, I'm not dismissing manufacturing. It's still important. The great companies like John Deere and Caterpillar and Packard and Boeing and Ford and, or, and Toyota, Honda, whatever, they still have a great uh, uh, potential, a great future if they're well run. But we do all these cool new innovations and services. So, for example, maybe the most important innovation come out of the United States and the services in the last hundred years was the invention of the supermarket came out in the 1930s in Houston and California and Queens, Long Island. That innovation has swept the world and it affects people all over the world and it's still very vibrant. It's morphed into new forms and so on, but the basic idea of the supermarket, I can, tell, I can make a case as student retailing, it's really what underlies Toys R Us and underlies Home Depot and underlies Bookstop, the bookstore chain that I started in terms of the basic idea of a big store and lowering the prices and doing more revenue per location to drive your cost down uh, on a relative basis. In any case, it's a big innovation. And yet, there's never been a single book written for the general market, the business market, about the history of the supermarket. Um, the invention of the convenience store, the fast food restaurant, the motel chain. And in entertainment, there's a lot more talked about, say, study history of television about Mr. Sarnoff, who gave us like color TV and a lot of the technologies for television. More talked about him in a lot of ways than Mr. Paley. Uh, who was a guy at CBS, and he gave us the soap opera, the nightly news, the TV star, that kind of stuff, which will probably, as a social and service innovation, probably outlast the technical innovations like NTSC Color TV, which is the system we use. 
So we really need to study how do we innovate in the services? How do we innovate in the service economy? Because those lessons, they can apply to financial services and legal services. And hey, heaven knows the U.S. Bank, consumer banking industry is among the most backwards and mismanaged industries in our society. Study what's happened to Bank of America in recent years and so on. And they really need innovation, yet it seems like nobody's talking about it. So my main things today are just Get used to being in a service economy, grab those opportunities, think hard about it, study the great innovators in the service economy. I did a couple of videos. I did the um, uh, history of the movie industry, the history of the airline industry, and the history of American retailing. All big service industries that are very important and yet aren't really widely covered in a lot of books and stuff. I did uh, talks at the University of Texas at Austin and the videos are online at the McCombs Business School website. So I'm trying to do my little part, but I'd urge you to get your hands around the service economy Economy, get comfortable with it and uh, figure out how to make the most of it. And that's it for today. I'll see you later.